Welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. I'm Village President Al Larson. In this episode, we'll check in with Schaumburg's Community Bee Garden. Then we'll hear about Schaumburg Summer Theater's production of A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. We'll close out the program with a visit from the Schaumburg Business Association. All of this and more today here on Speaking of Schaumburg. Last year, Schaumburg joined a number of communities throughout the country by opening the village's first bee garden. Here to tell us about this, this is the Village's Landscape and Sustainability Planner is Martha Dooley. Well, thank you, Martha, to welcome, welcome to Schaumburg. Thank you. Tell, tell me about the, the bee garden, not the beer garden, but the bee garden. <laughs> well, the bee garden opened last year uh, in spring, <clears throat> and we opened it up to residents of Schaumburg. We had a couple beekeepers in there last year, and um, I, I think they did pretty well. Their honey harvest was uh, quite good, so, this year we have another beekeeper that's come to the bee garden. He brought three hives, which is the maximum that's allowed <clears throat> for the residents. And um, it looks really good. I was out there a couple weeks ago and checking it out and um, everybody's hives look nice and strong. Where, where's it located? It's located, uh, the address is 200 South Plum Grove Road, but um, <clears throat> you won't see any address at the site. It's the vacant property on Plum Grove, just south of Schaumburg Road on the west side of the street. Okay. just. But pretty far away from the, from the street too, isn't it? Oh yeah, if, if I remember right, the bee garden is about 800 or 1,000 feet away from the street. So it's quite far from the street. And how many hives are in there? We have six hives in there this okay. year. Mm -hmm. Six, and how many beekeepers do we have? Three beekeepers and then six hives. Okay, all Yeah. Right. Now if somebody wanted to do this, what would they do? They would give me a call uh, and I can uh, send them an application and um, and then we can get started from there. I can let them know all the things that the village would require. We do require insurance for each beekeeper, um, but the beekeepers that participate in our bee garden have found a, um, a reasonable price for insurance. So we can help them out there by providing that name. And then if they choose to use that company, of course they can, but um, that's one thing that is required in China. What do they do with the, with the, uh, the, the money they get from the beehives? I mean, is, it, is it a business or a hobby or is it a... Do they sell it to restaurants, give it to restaurants? I think most Christmas. of the beekeepers do sell it and then they'll give it away as Christmas presents or things along that line. Um, there's a big market for honey, you know, fresh honey like that, raw honey. And so um, I, know that's, I know that some of them sell it, but I'm not quite sure where they do. They, they don't sell at our farmer's market. Um, we're sold out of booth space for the year and um, already have a honey vendor. So. Okay. They go out on their own and... Now we've heard, I've, I've heard, I've read about the colony, bee colonies collapsing across the country. Will this kind of mitigate against that at, at all or? Well, the one thing that, that the bee community hopes is that by more um, residents getting involved in beekeeping as a hobby, that it will diversify the genetic pool in, within the bees a little bit and maybe help with that. Um, researchers and scientists don't know exactly what the cause of colony collapse disorder is. That and was, so, that was a mite of some sort, didn't it? Well, they think it might be a mite, but they also think that it may have something to do with some of the chemicals that used, are used on some oh. of the big farms where you have a monoculture of, you know, almonds or corn or soybeans. You know, they, so um, there's a lot of research going on in that area right now. And over in Europe, they're banning some of those um, pesticides to see if it helps. Oh, so, and also, Another thing that was really difficult on the bees after this past winter was the winter. It was extremely cold and um, there were big, big losses of bee colonies over the winter. So how about, how, how about our, our bee colonies? Did they survive? Any, did we lose some of those? Or? Of the three hives we had in the bee, yard, bee garden over the winter, one survived. Oh my. And that's actually kind of a high rate considering last winter. I know at home I lost all of mine. And in the bee club I belong to, everybody talked about significant loss over the winter. So, how many hives do you have? I have um, four hives. Okay, mm -hmm. how'd you get started with with? Uh, well, one of my neighbors suggested it to me, and, and so um, I didn't know at the time. But several of the neighbors on my street, and, and I'm not in Schaumburg, but several of the neighbors on my street had beehives. So I went over and took a look at hers, and I thought, you know, this might be kind of fun, and um, might help with my vegetable garden. And I have a prairie in my front yard, so it might help with the pollination of that. So I got involved in it, and it's been a much more interesting hobby than I ever anticipated it would be. And we've learned an awful lot. I've been able to pass it on to our son. 
um, who, when I started, was only nine or ten years old. So it's been a lot of fun for the family. How, how, are, how are bees important to the, to the environment? And well, without bees, we wouldn't have um, any produce because the bees pollinate all of the vegetables and fruits that we eat. And if there was no produce, there would be no um, grasses for the cows to eat, the pigs, you know. So really, without bees, there would be no food. It's all, it's all connected, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's very connected. Mm -hmm. Now, my understanding is that, is that the, the, uh, the honey that they produce changes over the, over the course of a year. Like in the spring, it's, it's a lighter color, and, and, in, and, and towards the fall, it, it's a dark. Is that, is that true? How does, how does that... Have you noticed that? Well, one of the interesting things about um, the honey is unless you're a big honey producer and you take your bees to, let's say, an almond orchard or a, cl a large clover field, you know, you're really getting your bees to produce what's called wildflower honey. And it's a mixture of any flower that they go to, okay? okay. And so depending on what's in flower in the spring, the pollen color of that those types of flowers, it may be a little different than the flowers that are you know, blooming in the summer. And then again, if you get goldenrod later in the year, the pollen in that is kind of a darker yellow. And so actually during the course of the year when I'm checking the frames in my hive, as I look up through them, you know, up into the sun, I'll see different colors of pollen in the cells. And so it just, there's different colored pollen on different colored plants, you know, so it varies throughout the year. Yeah, definitely. Bees are more interested in, in, in finding pollen-producing flowers than they are of staying people, is that correct? I mean, Honeybees are much more interested in just the flowers. They're just interested in going out and collecting the pollen and the nectar to keep their hives going. I mean, that's the only thing that they're built for is to go and do that. They're very different than um, yellow jackets that are uh, prone to like sitting on your soda pop can. And they're, carniv they're, and carniv they're carnivorous, yeah. yeah. And so um, they're really what people mistake for honeybees later in, they'll come around in August sometime. And yeah, they have a bad reputation for honeybees when yeah. it's actually a, a wasp or some sort of a hornet. Yeah. yeah, and wasps and hornets, they can sting multiple times, whereas a honeybee can only sting one time. It has a little barb on the end of the stinger, so once it stings, that gets stuck in your arm and then it kills the bee. Yeah. So they don't want to yeah. sting. Now, now bees swarm from time to time, don't they? Mm -hmm. Why do they swarm and, and what should people do when, if they see a swarm? Okay, so bees do swarm. Primarily, it, it will occur in the spring, and it'll be a function of um, maybe the hive being a little bit too overcrowded, or um, the, the queen in the hive is weak, and so um, the queen will leave, and, and the rest of some of the bees will go with her. Um, but if you see a hive that's swarming, they look really chaotic when they're flying. But if you watch them for a while, they kind of spin around, and they'll land on a branch or they might land on the uh, leg of a picnic table. You know, they'll just find a place to land. The queen will be in the middle of that. The bees at this time are very, very docile because they have filled their stomachs up with honey to go and start their next hive. The purpose of it is they wanna go and start a new hive. Mm -hmm. And so um, if you just leave them alone, uh, they won't really come out of the hive. Now they may, after a period of resting, They'll get in that chaotic flying pattern again, and it's a little, a uh, little overwhelming to see it. But if you just stand back and watch it, they'll fly away to the next place they're going to go. Okay. Um, but you, you know, beekeepers can collect swarms sure. and then put those into a hive. They and need smoke too. Hive. It's some kind of, uh, if they're working with hives, they, I've seen them where they, they, they have smoke. That's, what does that smoke do? Yeah, when you're checking in your hives to see how everything's going, you smoke the bees and that gets them to go down further into the hive so that when you start to pull the frames out and things like that, uh, the bees are further down and they're a little bit disoriented from the smoke. And so it gives you a little bit better opportunity to take some time in the hive. Now, when you take the, 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 the what, what do they call it, the, the bee, what is it? What is it frame that you take? Mm -hmm. What's it called? It's, called, it's just called a frame. It's called so, a frame, okay. Yeah, the, it's a bee box, and then these frames sit in there like manila folders do in a file now, cabinet. Now, do the bees get aggressive when, when you try, try to take the, the honey? or You have to use uh, slower fluid motions rather than real choppy, fast motions. Try not to make a lot of noise, you know. Um, do, you, do you wear the, the, the... Yeah, I wear everything. Um, <laughs> just because, um, you know, I just want to protect myself the best I can. And then that way I feel a little bit more comfortable out at the hives. Now, if somebody wanted to, I asked you before, is there a phone number to, to reach you? And is there a phone number to reach this the bee, bee association? Or? So they can call me at the Village Hall at 847-923-3855. Um, 
and I can help them out. If somebody has a bee swarm, uh, it's really best for them to have a professional come and collect it for them. You know, I don't suggest they try this on their own if they're not How do they familiar find a professional? Um, I would contact the Cook DuPage Beekeepers Association, and they'll send out one of their members. You uh -huh. know, they'll send an email out to their membership and say, hey, somebody's got a swarm located at this address. Okay. You know, who can get out there to, to okay. pick it up? And beekeepers really like to get those because it's a free hive. Oh, yeah. You know? Sure. I can understand. Well, Martha? Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. For the 26th year, Schomburg Summer Theater returns to the Prairie Center this month with a production of A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. Find out more here next on Speaking of Schomburg. Since 1989, Schomburg Summer Theater Program has been presenting full-scale musicals featuring the, the talents of high school and college-age performers from across the northwest suburbs. Here to tell us about this year's production of A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum is director Rob Plekis and cast member Chris Zegland. I understand you're Zero Mostel. Yes, I am playing Pseudolus in the show. He's, okay. he's, a, he's a slave that wants nothing more than to be free, and so he kind of turns the show into this whole circus act where he's the ringleader and he's manipulating people around him and uh, doing everything he can to get his master with the girl he loves. Uh, things don't always go according to Hoyle when he's uh, trying to make things right. Okay. So there's a lot of things that go wrong in the, like in the what? process. Like what? You're on a show where things uh, go oh. wrong all the time, so. <laughs> yes, yeah, well, unintentionally, I suppose. But, uh, oh gosh, what happens? You know, he, he, you know, there always seems to be like surprise that people pop into the scene when they're just not supposed to. So, you know, there's, there's a, a, a strong willed. Um, uh, there's a husband and wife team, and the wife is not uh, uh, the most uh, gentle of spirits, and, and she pops in at the wrong times when the husband wants to do some, oh, uh, the hanky panky, and uh, so she's she shows up just at. How many cast time. members do you have? I've got 34 people in the show. Okay, is it, is yeah. it a lot of good dance numbers? Uh, actually, it's not a heavy dance show. There is some dancing, so okay. people will enjoy that. The, sure. the numbers themselves are, are pretty energetic, so we'll have a lot of movement in them. There'll be okay. some dancing in those. Okay. Uh, but, but it really comes down to the talents of people like Chris and, and our other cast members who, you know, we've, we've, uh, we're going to take advantage of their comic timing. Okay. You do have comic timing, don't you? Maybe. Okay, we'll see, we'll see what happens. <laughs> How could you not? <laughs> uh, how can you not? So, I mean, this is a show that was, uh, you know, from, from 1960. It was written by um, one of the people's Larry Gilbar, who used to write for the Sid Caesar show. I mean, this is... Mel this Brooks. Is, Mel Brooks. I mean, he didn't write this one, but it could have been. Because yeah, it's classic. Okay. It's classic shtick from start to finish. It's slamming doors. It's, you know, it's, it's like that golden age of is, is there, is there a Phil Silvers song. role in there, too? There, there actually, Phil Silvers was in the, was in the yeah. original production. Yeah, yeah. He, was, he was the Marcus Lycus, I think. So and, and That was a Broadway show before it became a... It was a Broadway oh, cool. show. It was actually one of C uh, Stephen Sondheim's earlier uh, vehicles that he wrote the music for. Okay. Uh, in fact, Chris Chris kicks off the opening number, which I think everyone who knows theater knows. What's what's what number is that? Sing oh, some, come on, he knows. He can sing some of that. Oh, I want to hear it. So, okay. Um, something familiar, something peculiar, something for everyone. A comedy tonight. He's good. He is good. He's good. And, and uh, you know, uh, you got a good cast this year, right? I have a great cast this year. Chris is, this is not Chris's, you're not your first show with nope. us. Uh, Chris was in uh, How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying two okay. years ago, Kiss okay. McKay a year ago. Uh, we've, got, we've got other people who are coming back from past seasons. Uh, just, just funny people. Yeah, yeah funny people. Com comedy reigns in this one, so uh, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, we, you know, we'd, after 25 years, you think we'd be out of ideas. But I, this is amazing so. that, that you're able to stage this. That's, that's, that's my feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really. Well, you know, it's, uh, you know, the humor, it's, yeah, uh, you know, it's, the, the thing, the, the way they treat some of the characters in the show is probably not exactly politically correct. <laughs> but the, there's, enough, there's enough vulgarity in there? There's enough saying? vulgarity in there, but it's so cartoonish that I think, I think, I don't think anyone's going to be offended by it. I mean, you have other high schools that put it on, and, and it's just, I mean, it's, to, to say it's even PG, I mean, yeah, obviously there might be some things that people could object to, but it's just so, it's so harmless and so, uh, it's so nostalgic in a way, you know. Where do you go to school, Chris? I go to Northeastern Illinois University. Okay, all right. What's your, what's your major? I'm a music education major. What a surprise. <laughs> yeah, how about that? <laughs> you, did, you did some opera recently there, didn't I you? I did. Yeah. Uh, we did Offenbach's La Vie Parisienne in the spring. Wee oui, wee. Oui. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. That's French, isn't it? It is. <laughs> <laughs> we did it in English, though. Oh, My okay. uh, director ah. actually took the entire script and translated it herself really? to English. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So you're comfortable in, in, in a role of uh, Zero Mostel and, yes, yes. and, and uh, singing the signature song? And it's a very physical role. I mean, you have to, to put on different voices, and, and there's a lot of uh, kind of dodging bullets and people, and uh, it's, it's a very, very active, active part. So, what, what, what and you, what you've done before? You said Kiss Me, Kate, and mm -hmm. uh, I played Bill Calhoun in Kiss Me, Kate last year. That's kind of a different role for you. That was, yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's more the romantic uh, guy. Yeah, we kept getting in gambling debts. <laughs> You got, now, you've got cast members coming back from previous productions, We do have obviously. cast members. Uh, uh, Carlos, uh, Carlos Olmedo is going to be, um, he was Chico when we did The Coconuts a few years okay. back, and All he's right. coming back to play the romantic lead. Uh, he, he's putting a twist on it. The, not, none of the characters in the show are particularly bright. I mean, I think he's probably the smartest one in the show. And he's about 10 seconds ahead of everyone. Only 10. <laughs> I give him just 10. Everyone else is somewhere between three and four seconds behind the rest of the universe. So uh, That so, sounds like a typical uh, Rob Yeah, Rob it is. It is Rob, exactly. yeah, we don't Rob Pelega <laughs> production, you know? We, we, yeah, we, we don't, uh, we're, not, we're not after the philosophical uh, here. We don't so. have any animals coming through, do we? Yeah. I sure hope not. Well, it depends. Some of the cast members, you never know what they are, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not exactly. Yeah. What, what got you interested in, in the theater? Oh, um... I, growing up, I had always wanted to do theater, and then when I joined high school, my first play, I was like, I just auditioned for it. It was Grapes of Wrath, and I got the role of Connie Rivers. It was, it was a smaller role, but it was my first time being on stage, and from there on, I just did every show that I could in high school. Kind of fills you up, doesn't it, when you get that response from the audience? Yeah. 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 And we do get good houses here, so and very responsive. We've always had, you know, just. Great well, how many, how many shows so. are there, and, and, and when is it? When is the, it going to be? And, and opens, how can you get tickets? Sure, the jo uh, show opens on July 25th. That's a Friday night, and it plays for two weekends. So Friday and Saturday, the 25th and 26th, and then the next week in August 1st and 2nd. And there's 7:30 shows. We used to start at eight, but we want to start a little earlier to get get the show on the road. So, uh, so 7:30 uh, tickets are only twenty dollars $20 for adults, sixteen dollars for students and seniors. Uh, they can go online to. Prayer center.org and buy them uh, and uh, you know it, summer theater has always been just uh, you know we don't like to brag but what what happens when we have these high school and college students who are so talented and so committed to the program uh, it's it's uh, as good as any community or local now what do you do when you have you have two equally gifted performers for the same or same role and, and boy that's a good question how do you, how do, you do that with, without losing good, one forever and that's a very good question because you know you do get a lot of talented people and uh, you, you kind of go you, you almost have to you have to look at the entire ensemble and see what works as a group Group, you know, and uh, and it's hard. I mean, I mean, there are times you have to kind of break hearts, and you can't. I mean, yeah, there are deserving people who who should get great roles, you know, but there just aren't enough roles to go around sometimes. So, uh, so you did okay this year. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't complain when he saw. Did, the you, did you always get roles that you, that, you try, that you try out for, as far as the summer theater is concerned? Um, I mean, and who's to blame besides Rob Palenkas? <laughs> <laughs> well, the past two shows that I've done here, I went in not really knowing much about the show and therefore not really auditioning for a specific role. I okay. just kind of came in and said, all right, cast me as whatever. And it, it worked out for the best. Yeah. You trusted Ron Palenka. And it, oh, well, I don't know about <laughs> that, but, uh, but they've been different parts and uh, you, you know, played well and, uh, and we, of course, want to feature him vocally because uh, yeah. you know, yeah. he sings okay. You know. He's in a rock band. Oh, really? What's I that? am. What, what? It's called 314 on Main Street. Really? Yeah. What does that re represent, 314 on Main Street? I'm sure there's a story there. There is. Um, 314 is supposed to be police code for public indecency. Well, you had to ask. Well, I, <laughs> <laughs> I think that kind of wraps up the show this, this <laughs> afternoon. Rob, thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Chris, Chris, great. Thank you. Great, great voice. Great. Really. It's going to be a, a good That's time. It's going to be a great time. Thanks. Break out the golf clubs and get ready to. Rub some elbows with the Schaumburg Business Association. Find out more next here on Speaking of Schaumburg. Connecting business members throughout the community, the Schaumburg Business Association aims to improve the quality of life and economic vitality of the Schaumburg area. Joining us today to tell us about this year's SBA Golf Classic is SBA President Kylie Harding. 
Well, welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg, Kylie. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here again. Yes, well, I'm, we're, we're so pleased to have you here. <laughs> Tell us what SBA is all about. What does SBA stand for, and, and, and how, how did you get involved? And well, SBA stands for the Schaumburg Business Association, and, and the SBA serves as the Chamber of Commerce for Schaumburg. And uh, I just celebrated my two-year anniversary with the SBA on the 12th of June. So I've uh, been here for two years. We've had some major changes. We've really um, started to grow membership and uh, created some new programs. And of course, um, what we love to do is continue to make better some of the programs we've had in events and the golf outing coming up. Uh, How many July. members do you have? Uh, we have about 540 right now. Okay. And we are on a uh, growth role, I want to say, because okay. we are looking to end out the year at 600 new members, and we are um, fast becoming one of the more um, analytical and value-driven okay. associations in this area, and uh, we're working right now to make sure that all members have access to their web portals, okay. and um, they, are can, can they can now see how many people are visiting them through the SBA networks. Um, we have on average 2,500 people a day that visit our website. Oh, really? And, you know, 2,500 people a day are able to access um, businesses' information. They can click through to a business's email and website addresses and uh, get contact information. They can get uh, driving directions. They can get hours of operation all through the SBA website. And uh, we're finding that a lot of people are now visiting members' websites more because of the information they're able to find well, on the great. SBA website. Well, tell me about it, some new programs that you might have at the SBA. Well, one of the new programs is actually kind of um, reinventing an old program that the SBA had, which was uh, stickers that would denote your membership in the SBA. So I kind of brought you know a photo of um, what our new cling is, and I'm very excited, Mayor, because these just arrived on our doorstep yesterday, and you are getting the very first door cling that anybody in the SBA is getting. That's for City Hall. Oh, wow. And what it says is 2014 proud member of the Schomburg Business Association. So whenever somebody comes to City Hall, they will know that the village of Schomburg is a member of the SBA. And uh, we're going to be mailing these out in the next couple weeks to every member of the Schomburg Great. Business Association. Um, there were some very interesting statistics that we found um, that was done by, by the American Chamber of Commerce executives that 46% um, of people that see a sticker on a door of a business or a restaurant that says they're a member of the local Chamber of Commerce, they're more likely to think favorably of that place. 86% um, of people are more likely to eat at a restaurant that is a member of a Chamber of Commerce or a business And we have enough restaurants in, in town. Absolutely. So. Right. Um, I, I mean, not enough, but I mean, right. enough to satisfy. We, yeah, we love <laughs> that there's, and there's 60 restaurants that yeah. are members of the, of the Schomburg Business Association. And so what we found were that people, our business members, were actually asking for this program again because they felt like it did instill a trust oh, sure. in, you know, community members oh, that sure. would come in. And there's so many of our members that are so generous to the, to the business community, and we want them to be able to showcase that. Can I put this on eBay, eBay, eBay at all, or just, no, no. I'm, you know, no. If, if you get anything from that on eBay, let us know, because we have a few <laughs> extra that we could do all that right, with. Well, thank and you. then the other new program we have, um, and this was a switch that happened in September our, that we're educating our members on now. We switched to a new um, membership management software that now allows members to track um, their statistics to see how many people are visiting their website through the SBA website. So like I said a little earlier, we have 2,500 people on average a day that is visiting the website. We've even had some days that have tracked up to 4,000 people. And so now a company, and this is just an example of one of our members, they can see how many people per day based on a monthly um, count have visited their website through the SBA. So we're really now able to show the value that the SBA is giving to members because we're able to really easily connect um, people that are visiting the SBA website and searching for anything from um, you know, contractors to attorneys to um, doctor's offices to veterinary clinics. Um, when we lead them to those companies' member businesses, they can track it now and see how many people are visiting them. Well, it's a great tool to have. Absolutely. Now you were, you were at the uh, groundbreaking ceremony for Zurich, weren't you? That was really exciting, and uh, you know it was really cool to see how a business like Zurich, who has been in Schaumburg for over 20 years, when they decided to uh, 
build their own, you know, headquarters, which is a beautiful building, um, that they decided to stay in Schaumburg. And I think it's a real testament to the business community that we have here. And um, Zurich's a great member of the SBA too. Um, they've been really involved and we've had some great relationships with representatives from Zurich. Um, and through talking with them, they said it just really made sense for their company. It made sense for um, their employees. Their employees. Yeah. And, you know, they, they feel the same way that I do about Schaumburg. It's a great community. It's a great place to do business. It's a great place to live. And, you know, they really feel like this is the right place for their company to grow. After the groundbreaking, they had a, 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 an event for their uh, employees at, at, at the... Uh, at the Renaissance. Yeah. Yeah. But that then was really but, nice. But then from there, they went over to the, to the atria uh, of the 20-story uh, office building, one of, one of those. And, and uh, the, just a huge crowd. Just, and they, yeah. Very enthusiastic. And, and their employees and there. And very, very, very pleased that, that they're, they're staying here in Chamberg. Yes. And, yes. and we're very pleased that they're staying right. here in Chamberg. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, Schaumburg is, is a great place to do business. And I think that shows in, you know, some of the major companies that have committed to come here and the ones that are, you know, building new buildings from the ground up, you know, the American Society of Anesthesiologists, Sunstar, you know, two major corporations that are moving. Um, ASA came from Park Ridge and Sunstar from the city of Chicago. And they feel like Schaumburg is the right place for them to grow and build and do business. Well, certainly I agree with that. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I do too. Yeah, we're very proud of that. Now, t tell me about the golf, the golf classic. What, yeah, what makes the, it a classic? Well, <laughs> you know what, Mayor, I really have to say, I think, and I've done a lot of different chamber golf outings. I've done a lot of other, you know, charitable golf outings, um, you know, through my past career in, in chamber and then also with Whole Foods as a vendor at a lot of those. Um, I feel like our golf outing really is the one that, one, you get the most value out of. You know, great people to network with there. There's a lot of deals done on the, on the golf course, and I hear those stories all the time afterwards. We make it really fun. We make it, um, you know, we try to make it affordable for people to come and participate and sponsor things and golf. And um, we provide a lot of opportunities for people to volunteer if they don't golf and, you know, don't want to, you know, sit at a hole or something for the day. We allow our members to come in and volunteer so they can still be part of the mix. But the classic part of it is, is you can count on that good time every single year. It is always the Schomburg Golf Course. We think it's one of the most beautiful golf courses in the area. Um, the Park District always has a beautiful course to play on. Uh, Chandler's and a la carte entertainment always does a great job with the food there. We do a barbecue on the course now so that when people start up golfing they can get a big barbecue sandwich or a hamburger or chicken or veggie burgers and uh, then we have a fantastic uh, dinner afterwards where we do award ceremonies and there's always a lot of raffles that so many of our local businesses donate to. And How are ticket sales so far? Ticket sales are really good. We, In fact, we only have nine foursomes that are even available and we're a month out from the event. So if somebody wants to golf, they should, you know, call now to make sure that they and can And who would they in. call and what, what, what would they call? Well, they would call the Schomburg Business Association. So they can visit our website at schombergbusiness.com or they can call our office at 1-847-413-1010. Um, uh, okay. So that's, it's easy to sign up and get registered and um, it's a really fun outing to play in and, you know, we, um, always have a lot of fun in the summertime with the golf outing. Do you play golf? I do play golf. Yeah, we actually... What's um, your handicap? I don't know. I haven't... I don't play that seriously enough to have that yet. Well, see, I, I, my <laughs> handicap is just a game of golf. That's all. Right. Well, you know, I... And this is the other fun thing we just did. We had a ladies golf outing, our very first one in June. Mm -hmm. And we had 60 women that came and played at this ladies golf outing. And... Um, but that was it only was, nine holes, it right? It was nine holes. Only I mean, I, nine I can, holes. I can do nine. Nine holes is still a lot. You know? <laughs> I know. <laughs> it depends on how you play. I, I know. But um, I, you know, I did play in that one, and it was a lot of fun. And um, it was really fun to see how many women come out for that because our golf classic, even though it is a co-ed um, outing, we still only have about two dozen women that play sure. in that. The majority of the, you know, two... 200 or well, you got these guys, these heavy right. hitters come out there, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah cuz the golf classic can be fairly competitive. You know, oh, there's yeah. there's several forces that come out there and they really want to I'm win. sure I'm sure there's side activity going on too between forces. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's meant to be fun and it's meant to be um, yeah. you know, competitive in some ways, but honestly, you know, we do these events because they're great networking opportunities. Sure. You know, it's a lot of fun to uh, you know, kind of get out of the office for the day and spend time with maybe sure. clients or potential clients or um, as a way to say thank you for some employees or something like that. Oh, that's, and that's great. Just a nice day out in the sun. It sounds like it's going to be good weather too. Huh? I hope so. We <laughs> ordered it in, so okay. we'll see if it arrives, you know. Kylie Thank you so much, thank, Mayor. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much. That'll do it for this edition of Speaking of Schaumburg. Join us again next month for an all-new episode. Until then, I'll see you around town.